interesting to note, Sean, that this is actually the first time for Paolo Miao back at the World Championships since his uh, doping suspension related to, I believe it was 2016. Yeah, I think, yeah. His, uh, his suspension came to an end towards the end of last year. He returned to IBJJF competition. We've seen him a oh. number of tournaments. That was nice timing. That's going to be two. Good work by Mandavani to yeah. get on the scoreboard early. That's going to help later in this match. Yep. And uh, oh, look at this. Immediately, Miao working that hyper intricate leg game that he is so well known yeah. for. And he's he's got some good grips. So, I mean, he's working the legs in a very, very good position. He's going to come to the top. Coming up to the top and not only... Oh, I have a little bit of a wardrobe malfunction. Yep. You really don't want to see that. Nope. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a shame. Kill the momentum a little bit because Meow using that, that leg fighting game that the... The crab ride coming up. It looked like he may come up into a leg drag yeah. or into a um, into a back take. But you know, it's it's an evolution of the games, isn't it? The, yeah. He came up into a smash pass position. Yeah, he did. You know, he. I I wasn't really even watching Meow on that exchange. I was watching Montavani's reactions, and you could see that he had no, he had nothing to combat what. Um, Meow was doing, and uh, that's what, for me, that's what said that he's, he's, he's up because the, the legs were out of position, um, the arms were out of position, and and, uh, and that led to their Meow's rise up here in this. Yeah, this is a bad spot for Mantovani. I mean, we know how good that Paolo Meow is when he hits that leg drag yeah. position, but having trained with Murillo Santana now for so long and uh, being based at Unity Jiu-Jitsu in New York. It's interesting that so many of these lightweight representatives are, are playing this heavy passing yeah. game, just like Murillo, and it's so effective. Oh, I love the smashing game. It's, I think it's my favorite way to play. I, I think it kills a lot of, solves a lot of problems. Um, the head grinding. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, the head in the front there is a good idea. It, it, just, it just makes sure that you're pinning uh, your opponent, and that's a wise idea too, to thread the leg out of there, get the leg out of the danger. I don't Look. like the head in the back. Uh, I like there. Now he's got you good like the head, head on the chest. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You win the back through the pin. The head on the back can present its own little problem. There, head in the front is where it's at. It gives you the back because your opponent exactly has. There you what go. We're seeing. You see, the head in the front can elevate up to the head and and get in the way of Montavani's arm, which does this, gives you the back. The head around the oh, back can be very one. scrambly and loose. An adult, male, black belt, I gotta say, I love seeing that, that pressure passing Influence. game, Paolo Miao up Diaz, on his toes, that forward just pressure, yep. just driving, also, driving, Paolo. driving. It's so aggressive. It it's uh, it's yeah. really interesting that just when we Influence. think that, you know, we've Influence. seen uh, everything Influence. in jujitsu, something Alexandre new comes along Sorge. and the who would have imagined, who would have predicted that the, the evolution of, of, of strategy in the lightweight divisions would be this heavy pressure Smash. passing game? Yeah, it's, uh, it's about, you know, it's the position. And now, just look at it, he's got a near underhook. His head, is, his head has got to get a little wider to his left, but you see it gives the back. There, now he's on the mount. That, that's what the head up the middle gives you. It gives you this near underhook position and... Now he needs to move his head way up into the left. He's got double unders, still has excellent position, but and it's just pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Well, Murillo Santana, he was uh, quite proud actually of the fact that that all of his guys, the majority of them, were under 150 pounds, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and they all barabolo from bottom and they smash nice. and pressure yeah. pass from top. And um, and he said to me himself, he's like, well, you know, the best way to kill the Baron Bolo is both knees on the ground and, you know, pressure pass, heavy, yeah. heavy, heavy. And, well, if all of his guys are these amazing guarderos, as the as the Portuguese uh, term is, uh, the Brazilians like to say, these guys who are fantastic guard players, it, uh, it makes a lot of sense that when you get on top, rather than just uh, get swept back, that you play this, this heavy go forward, low pressure passing yeah. style. And that's exactly what we're seeing here yeah. from Paulo Miao. Paulo Miao has the right near underhook. He's got to move his body off the left. The, the thing that you can't have is that you can't have your, your left, in this case, it's his right leg. Can't have his right leg underhook. The Montavani's sneaking that left 
arm under there. That, you don't want that when you have a near underhook. Because this can happen. The guy can get his guard back. And, and uh, that's all combated with some movement into the towards the legs, and it'll stop that kind of stuff. But uh, Montavani did a nice job of... He did counting. do a nice job of getting back his guard yeah. in that position. That was... Yeah. Um, you know, he's still down 7 2. You know, Paolo's been racking up those points, but uh, but even winning your guard back in that kind of position, <laughs> I mean, that's that's a, a significant <laughs> victory, right? It is, yeah. You win those small battles. Yep. But Paolo, look at that go forward pressure yeah. here. It's just. And look, at the, I love the way that he uses his hands. He's not yep. using the gi grips. Yep. Uh, hand grips, is the, 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 he kind of scoop grips or yep. cups the, the shoulders and the back. But you can see the exertion and the, the tension in his hands. Yep. It gives you an idea of how much he's, he's pulling his opponent into him to go forward. Yeah, he's got a good position now. With the cross face, a far underhook. He's got this left foot trying to help free that scorpion. Montivani's right arm is in decent position, though. It's on that far back leg. What do you think that shoulder pressure feels like, Sean? No, it doesn't feel good, I'll tell you that. I bet your Montivani's face is going to have a gi imprint in it after it's over. Here we go. Nice work by Montivani there. Still not out of danger. Oh, manages to tie up a lapel. Now, this could be his salvation. So we're just past the halfway mark in this 10-minute match. Seven points to two. Paulo Miao has been, been very active so yeah. far. But uh, Mantovani, I think it's fair to say that he's been in 100% uh, defensive yeah. after that initial uh, takedown at the beginning of the match. But um, now that he's got control of that lapel, are we going to see him go on the attack? Yeah, let's see. I mean, it has been uh, basically him just recovering for five minutes like he got out in the lead and then all of a sudden got himself in trouble paulo looks in the zone he i does, gotta yeah. say yeah that's he's been fired up this year we've seen him compete in a number of times and um you may not be able to see it i think it's already uh been reduced to a smudge but he really turned heads earlier this year when he came out and he had some numbers and letters written on his cheek. Mm -hmm. And people were really intrigued by what it could mean. Well, of course, Paolo is a very religious person. And if they were references to verses in the Bible. And he came out today and he had them on his cheek again. And he uh, he switches them up. He likes to, likes to change it depending on how he feels and the, the particular significance of the meaning of those verses on the day. But uh, it just goes to show that Paolo, as a competitor, that there's always ways that you can develop. And I think one way that he has really developed this year is his, his focus, his, uh, his mindset. Um, I mean, he's looked, he's looked untouchable when he competes. And I think what's really What's really interesting to see is that uh, when he's had performances that maybe haven't been quite as good as he hoped, then when we've spoken to him, he's been very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's been very mature mm -hmm. and, and very reflective over those performances. I really, you know, he used to be inconsolable after yeah, the defeat, yeah. right? You used to see him go off the mat, you know, sobbing you know, over in a heap down in the corner quite the opposite now completely changed so uh, it definitely speaks to his um to his maturity yeah, I think his maturity as a competitor. what you said is a very good perfect word Montevani trying to use a lapel uh, meow staying away and the the, the problem that Montevani's going to face here and I was facing now is the time that is just going away. It's clicking clicking away, clicking away, and, and the lapel game can be, if you have someone as intelligent as Meow and moving away, it can take a long time to try to get yourself underneath. Doesn't have the, doesn't have time on his side right now, so. Yeah, I think what's really uh, interesting to note here is how the, the, the look of this match has changed now that Mantovani managed to grab that lapel mm -hmm. because 
for the first five minutes of this match, Paolo head down, going forward, smashing. Yep. And now, completely the opposite. Yeah, the moment away. that Mantovani grabbed hold of that <laughs> lapel, you suddenly see all this space between them <laughs> and Miao go in the complete opposite direction. Now he has some forward motion. Yep. That's a nice work from Miao. Going one way and then as the leg comes over, flip up over on top. Yeah, He's passing round to the other side. Absolutely cutting back the other way now. The Not lapel still wrapped around the... Uh, oh, no, there it goes. The lapel grip has been broken. Now in this... Uh, Oh man, this is hit. this is a bad spot for pa Pablo Mondovani. It is. He needs a stiff arm and get his hips away. He's got a left hand a scoop of the leg. There, he took it out. Realized it's just not going to be good enough. But you see how he's trying to move to his right hip, which is the right thing to do. Uh, but Miao is going to place that right knee on the floor, and that right underhook will kill it all. You see, he's got the hand in the armpit, and this is one once again where I prefer to head up the middle rather than off to the side. The right underhook, head up the middle, will kill the legs and the hips. They call this the uh, the unfair 50-50 sometimes, <laughs> don't they? It's like, because it, it looks like 50-50 with that leg wrapped oh. up, but uh, as soon as that leg passes across the center line, this is a bad spot to yeah, be. It is. There's really not a lot of uh, you can do here other than try and escape it. There's I think Mantovani with that foot in the hip is, uh, has helped yeah. him a touch. Yeah, there, there's the head up the middle. Now it's done. He's got double underhooks, which is what you want, especially this right underhook. In my opinion, this is what people don't focus on enough when they have the outside leg position from the top, is that right underhook slaughters the, re the, the, the recovery of that outside leg position. And that's classic Murillo Santana. Yeah. Getting that, that, that body lock, yep. uh, the underhook, the yep. double underhooks from the top yep. and that head down on the mat. There we are, the end of the match. Solid work from Paolo Man, Miao there. I gotta good. say, that is a very, very composed. I, I, I like it actually. It's a mix of intensity, composure, technical smarts. As far as performances go, oh, just speaks. It's a very complete picture yeah. of him as an athlete. Yeah, absolutely. The 7 2 win. That two for Pablo Mandavadi came right right at the beginning of the match and uh, save for a few moments where he was Our able to recover that was one way traffic for Pablo yeah, yeah, Paolo yeah Mio. that's it Paolo yeah. Mio. Yeah. Paolo Mio. so that does place Paolo into the quarter final against his teammate Thiago George and there's no way they'll fight so exactly who advances through the final we'll wait and see but look at that pressure that forward pressure Sean yeah, and that, that's where uh, Montavani actually was able to get out the lapel for a while. But, uh, couldn't save him, unfortunately. Could not. Yep. 